Hello! Um, I knit a vintage jumper. Uh, vintage is probably the wrong word. I knit an antique jumper and I just thought it would be quite fun to come on here and talk through a little bit of the process of knitting it and kind of how it differed from some other patterns that I've done and just show off some of the details of it so that you don't have to yeah, either go and track down uh, an antique <laughs> jumper that's been knit with this pattern coincidentally uh, or knit it yourself because it took freaking ages. If you want to, I'm not here to like talk you out of it, like it's still pretty cool, um, but like just FYI. It took ages. Spoiler alert. Mm. So this is the jumper. This is the ladies outing sweater. It is from the Colum I'm trying to get, make sure I get the front. <laughs> it's from the Columbia Book of Yarns. Uh, I think it's one that Engineering Knits uses quite a lot. And I think it's from like 1914, 1912, so around that time and North America because it's from Columbia. Uh, and it is this striped jumper, I've knit it in grey um, and like visually it's sort of Edwardian period so if you watch any of the Bernadette Banner videos um, that kind of same same era that, that her aesthetic is. Um, and I want this video to be mostly for people who are interested in like historical costuming and uh, history bounding costume space in general rather than necessarily for knitters so I am going to be explaining a few things which might be a little bit kind of basic but I thought it's still quite interesting to go through how the garment was constructed and I think that might be quite interesting for people like more broadly than just knitting. Um, so it's difficult to tell from a distance because you've got this interesting striking effect but the stitches on this are so tiny like <laughs> Uh, for any for any knitters in the audience, um, it's very grand. My videos usually get about ten views. Uh, for anybody that likes to see, that's that's here that knows anything about knitting, uh, this is ten rows per inch. Like I worked it out for the gauge, so um, like that way I didn't measure it that way because I didn't need to. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, really, really, really teeny tiny, and it's constructed in a weird way. So. There are a few different ways to construct jumpers and there are probably as many ways as there are knitters but some of the quite like standard ones are you can either do it in like panels so you cut out a front piece and then you cut out a back piece so you've got like two bits that look like a vest and then you have your sleeves and you seam up the sleeve on the side and then maybe you do some extra finishing. So this is one I got from a charity shop that uses that and the seams are quite visible so I thought that'd be good. So you can see that it's got a shoulder seam, it's got a seam all the way around the arm and down each side of the body. There's a seam that runs the whole way down and there's one that runs down the sleeve. So this would have been made a front bit, a back bit, each arm and then all of the extra little fancy bits put on afterwards. So this um, neck band which is the same as when you knit it, usually you put the neckband on at the end. Um, the cuffs have been put on after because they're that different material and the um, hem or waistband sort of part of it. Uh, and from my understanding, because I only started knitting jumpers reasonably recently, like in the past sort of five years, that's quite an old fashioned way to do it. So if you've got vintage patterns from like the 1970s or something like that, um, modern patterns as well, I did a hobby one uh, last, uh, oh, I was <laughs> I was knitting it while I was in uh, in quarantine with COVID, so 2021, um, and that's got the same uh, general number of pieces, uh, like a front, a back, and each sleeve, so four pieces, and then anything extra for the finishing. Um, but a pattern from like the 1960s or the 70s, or kind of one of the slightly older ones that you might find in like mum or grandma's pattern book or charity shops or whatever. Um, will possibly use this style. Something that's a bit more modern is being knit in the round. So this is one that I knit. Um, this one obviously doesn't have any sleeves but this one's been knit as a tube so I cast on around the bottom, joined it and then just knit it as a tube the whole way up. If you've seen anybody using those knitting looms that you crank that's this is kind of what they produce, this, this kind of tube design um, and then you split at the armholes, work up the front, work up the back and then you can like rejoin it. On this one I just turned those live stitches into a neckband and finished it 
in the round but you can do whatever you want um so you can do sleeves in the round as well so you just knit them as a continuous tube without having a, a seam underneath or anything like that so that is another way that you can construct a jumper and something else that's got quite common um excuse me particularly in the kind of norwegian styles where they have the big decorated yokes here's one i made earlier um is that you knit a big yoke so you knit that top section um either as the first bit or as the last bit this one it's from the top down so that was the first thing that i i knitted um so you knit oh, this whole bit across um the neck and both shoulders and then you take each section and work them as a tube so you do like a little capy number and then one sleeve body other sleeve or whatever order you want to do them in um, so that's generally how this one was made and jumpers can be done bottom up or top down and this one obviously i said i did uh top down so you can cast on here or you can cast on around the neck and that's the same regardless of the different ones that I've done. Um, with that being mentioned, <laughs> this one is constructed, I think probably the most appropriate term would be tabard style. So uh, if we take you to the back of the garment, which is this bit, uh, this is the cast on edge. <laughs> really weird, because in all of these other ones, like the hem has been included. In this one, this waist bit is the last thing that you knit. It's wild. Oh, maybe the neck is but like you you knit those <laughs> as the last thing so you cast on here at the back work the whole way up the back cast off for the neck work like a few rows for like the shoulder cast on for the front and cast on more than you did so you've got like more space here um work the other side and then you work all the way down the front which is really odd and <laughs> i'm thinking maybe the reason for doing this is because this one's got a ribbed pattern so it gives you um no shoulder seam so there's a full continuity in it so i'm wondering if that's supposed to aid that flow but that was that was so weird i was looking at the pattern like is that what it actually wants me to do and it was <laughs> so yeah absolutely bananas uh but yeah so it's worked all the way up and then you sew down the side so normally things like working in the round is where you're constructing kind of the back and the front is so that you don't have long seams. Um, I think partially because people don't enjoy sewing them. Um, sometimes there are people that knit jumpers that um, don't like to sew at all or can't sew particularly um, at all. Uh, my ex-mother, like my ex's mum uh, couldn't sew. So she'd knit all these jumpers and then give them to someone else to sew up, uh, which is wild. So yeah, this is quite a heavy... Uh, heavy amount of seaming for that. The other thing to note as well, if when we're talking about like the early parts of the the making, is uh, that this has got quite a fun ribbing pattern, which I would recommend. I I think everyone should consider this as part of their like if they're knitting garments and thinking of like a nice pattern to put on a jumper to consider something like this. So from a distance, this has got a nice striped rib. This is two by two ribbing. So this is quite standard in a lot of garments. Um, but the pattern on here is a little bit wild. So this is uh, the skinny stripe and the two spaces next to it are six stitches. And then this fat stripe is nine stitches. But this isn't the fat stripe, I just lied to you. This is a series of skinny stripes in one by one rib. So if you go in close, uh, you can see there's that additional piece of textured detail, which I think is really fun like depending on how close you are and how stretched out the garment is depends on which stripe looks fatter because like from a distance it's this one that's stretched out and closer up it's very clearly this one and i really enjoyed that like that gave me a headache and then when it was established was really fun as a knitter like now it's finished i love it doing it was eh, not the worst but like it, it was a little bit of a, a thinking that had to happen. I got into it eventually. By the time I was doing the sleeves, it was like, yeah, this is fun. This is fine. Um, so that's something else to think about. Uh, this was done on the teeniest, tiniest needles. As I mentioned before, the gauge was very, very small. 
high? I don't know. The needles were tiny and it took for freaking ever. Um, this has ended up with a piece of really thick material um, to the point where like if you're holding it and you like flick it, like it makes its own noise and it was like standing up by itself when I put my needles down. It's like just a really sturdy piece of fabric. It's still stretchy because knits by construction are and also rib stitches are stretchy. So there's no like concern about that. But yeah, I think one of the things about um, knitting sort of previously is we used to do very skinny yarn. I think it was mostly like four ply, like the, the thinner stuff. Um, rather than kind of double knit Aran and chunky and like we're doing that much more as like a modern thing. Uh, this is made in an Aran yarn so it's a little bit thicker. This one's made in a chunky so like the stitches are massive um, especially by comparison. So if you're not used to looking at knit it's um like the V stitches. Uh, the individual stitches. So that'll... <laughs> that gives you a bit of an idea of just how different some of it is. So this has worked on something like 1.25 mil needles, so thin. It was like if you have a bamboo skewer to put on your barbecue and then you just cast on on that, that would probably give you the right gauge. Like, it was so small. So some other interesting bits about the construction that I wanted to talk about as well. So you work kind of this front to back piece, you work the sleeves. The sleeves have fairly standard increasing and decreasing. Um, it's got a super long cuff, which I thought was quite fun. So in the same way as you have with uh, different like, I've seen some of the, the illustrations and things like that for uh, the Edwardian kind of silhouette where the women have these really long cuffs. It actually has a really long cuff so this part here is the cuff the two by two ribbing before it goes back into this fun striping effect um, as you can see I matched my dye lots really well <laughs> I was using Poundland acrylic yarn it is in no way historically accurate but I had it on hand and I wanted to use it and then I had to buy some more so everything's slightly weirder colors it doesn't look that dramatic in person <laughs> looks worse on the camera so there's this really long cuff which you then fold back um, and then generally it's just got a few increases, which you can see. Um, so it works quite straight for quite a long period of time. And then has like a series of increases here um, and a series of increases here. So mostly it is quite plain as opposed to some of the other patterns where they like gradually increase over time. Um, this is kind of a straight and then kick out and then another kick out. You can't see it on the actual garment when you're wearing it and I will put it on as well to show how it is. Um, so as I mentioned this belt is put on afterwards so you knit it as a separate piece and then you sew it on which I also thought was quite interesting. Um, I don't know if that was to make it a little bit more custom maybe if you wanted to put on a wider or narrower waistband depending on what your what your ratios were. Um, but the most interesting thing that I thought uh, was in this was I'd watched a Carolina Zabrowska video a while ago, um, something like uh, I put on a hundred year old dress and it fits. And she was talking about how the dress, even when she was holding it, because it was designed to create that kind of pigeon shape, had that sort of cut into it. And there's evidence of that on this knit as well, which is honestly I think the most exciting and fascinating thing um, about it. So with the neck piece you do um, straight across the back, like when you're holding it, um, because you've cast off some and then you cast on more, um, you end up with a kind of almost like a D shape, so like a capital D, so the back is kind of flat and then the front is kind of around. Um, so there is that additional piece of fabric there that isn't particularly weird. You do get jumpers that you make that are the same back and front, um, but usually you have a little bit more space in the front for the bust and like if you're gonna have like a v-neck it'll obviously be like a v at the front and then like higher at the back so that's not unusual. But it has some short rows. So short rows are when you don't go all the way um, along so you're doing some extra uh, in the middle. 
and that can be for if you're doing like along the back of the neck so obviously you've got that sort of triangular shape um, that means you can kind of knit along this bit getting longer and longer before you start doing the whole shoulder bit um, and it just means that things fit better and differently um, and you do some short rows at the bottom so this and then because you're sewing this on afterwards the actual words which I thought were lovely were to gather the fullness of the bust <laughs> Um, so because you've got like boobs on the front and not on the back, most of us, um, this is uh, that extra little bit of fabric. So you've got kind of a little bit extra here because it's on the front, so it kind of allows it to come a little bit lower. Um, and then you've also got this extra bit here, which is below the bust. Um, this waistband is actually on the waist and it is on my waist as well. And I've got quite a high compared to torso one so it does really come in here um so you, and the extra little bit of stitching is like here <laughs> which is quite interesting because if you think about that silhouette you've got kind of the, the breasts are enhanced with like the sort of curved shapes of corsets and things but everything's quite like flat there's not so much for pulling stuff in in the middle um in this era and that's on there and <laughs> I think it's really funny that uh, when it's just on the hanger, it kind of looks like a beer belly. <laughs> like, you know, like the old, I don't know, this is just a very British thing of like kind of the old British man who's got a, a polo shirt that's not quite long enough and then his tummy's hanging out underneath and it's a bit of a beer belly down the pub and whatever moment. Um, no, sh like no shame for anybody's bodies as they are. But like, I, I just think it's funny that my, <laughs> I gave my jumper a beer belly um, and when you put it on, it all of that extra bit of fabric, it, it smooths out and it goes up and it sort of covers around. So it's not, it doesn't give you a beer belly when you wear it, but I think it looks kind of funny on the, on the hanger, like when I'm holding it. This has never been on a hanger, I don't really hang my clothes. So I'll pop it on and then you can also have an eyeball of what it looks like. I think there's something very cool about making your own, um, making your own antique jumper. In that having antiques, like buying them, they're very expensive. Whereas I made this, so it's not actually antique, it's like seven months old. Oh, it's too warm to be wearing this bad boy. It's a very warm jumper <laughs> because the material's so thick. Um, because the needles were like cocktail sticks. Um, but it does kind of mean that I can own and look at an antique garment without needing to do anything more than go on archive.org and use their free um, use their free resources. So yeah, you can also get this pattern on there for free and it is usable. Um, oh, something I didn't mention earlier is it's a dropped shoulder construction. So sometimes when you make jumpers, you make them like to here. So you, you come in at the armpit. This one doesn't. It continues straight up the whole way. And then when you put the, the arm on the shoulders, naturally stretch it all out that way. I made it exactly for the size that it said in the book, which was um, for a 34 inch bust. Now, I don't know if that was like 34 inches here or 34 inches here. Um, my bust size is a 34B and it fits like this. Uh, so and it didn't have a gauge on there, I don't think. Just told you the needle sizes to use. It didn't even tell you much about the yarn choice. I think it had like a specific brand name yarn which is like super helpful <laughs> looking at it a hundred years later when the brand probably doesn't exist at all um, or would be inordinately expensive. So yeah, you can tell from like the short row shaping as well where that like, extra bit in, it like also gives this visual illusion of like where the stripes kind of come around that way. So this is the effect of that kind of beer belly <laughs> that was on there. Um, so yeah, it gives that kind of additional kind of chest shape. I'm obviously not wearing any supportive undergarments at the moment. For reference, I'm wearing a polyester dress, I'm not even wearing a bra. <laughs> um, so this is already kind of working to give that kind of shape and the seams on the shoulders are probably doing things. I'm gonna be honest, I watch a lot of Coztube. I haven't done a lot of my own like personal research. This may also be doing more weird illusory magic about like where the seams are and the, the different shapes and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like on. 
it pretty much fits. Um, I do find it quite tight, so when I sewed this band together, because you do the front piece and you do the back piece of the waistband, um, I undid some of the stitches at the bottom, not the knit stitches, the sewn stitches, so that that then just gave me that little bit of breathing room to get this on over my head. I think I maybe should have sized up a needle, I think the instructions said to do that and I didn't, because I just live my life lawlessly. Um, but yeah, that's what the cuff looks like down. So it's definitely designed to be worn cuffed up, but you do, I suppose, have that option if you were then putting on some gloves, maybe you could tuck your gloves in there. And then that matches quite nicely to the neck, which is just folded over from a double. Uh, so yeah, this is the ladies' outing sweater. I think Engineering Knits has made another one from the same book, from like the previous or the next one as like a bicycling sweater. Um, and yeah, it's very warm, so I'm going to take it off because the last time I wore it was in December when I just finished it. Um, but yeah. It's it's a fun project. I'm glad I did it. I'm not going to be rushing to do anything with this super teeny weeny gauge again. Um, but I have had a go at some of the crochet projects and some of the lace and things like that as well. And that can be a lot of fun. So yeah, ladies outing sweater. I'm hoping this is helpful for any historical costumers that might want to see what a extant pattern looks like knit up in the modern day and using some slightly modern materials. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea of how something was constructed, so you don't have to construct it yourself unless you want to. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've put enough rubles in this dead rat. Have a good day. <laughs>